Next on BYU SN, how many quarterbacks will BYU play in tomorrow's New Mexico Bowl? And Zach is back in New York for the Jets, but for how long? Hopefully many moons. Welcome to BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Sports Official Outfitter and BYU fans everywhere. It is Friday, December 16th. It's game day eve, baby. I'm Jeremy Jordan in Provo. He is Spencer Linton in Albuquerque at University Stadium on the campus of New Mexico. What's uh, Albuquerque been like uh, now in day three, Spence? It's frigid. It is absolutely frigid right now. It's uh, 30 degrees. The wind is blowing. Not ideal. <laughs> it feels like it's about 20 degrees. And I'll have more on the weather update and what's expected for BYU and SMU in the New Mexico Bowl tomorrow during our game notes section. But it has been cold. That doesn't mean that the players haven't had a good time and there was a family feud fiasco last night. It got super competitive between the Mustangs and the Cougars. They, the players have had a great time. Their families have had a great time as long as they're indoors, Jerem. Unfortunately, the game takes place outdoors. So whoever can endure the cold the best, maybe that's the key to this game. Is BYU football the most expensive bowl game experience because they have more married players than anybody else? That's just a thought I just had. No other team is, <laughs> is taking like, you know, uh, 30 wives or something on the play. I don't know. Yeah. Well, on that note, Jaron, BYU chartered two separate planes. Two planes. So certainly that factors into it being a more expensive bull trip. Absolutely. All right, let's get to what's on the show today. And it's free television, so at least people have that going for them. We will have our game day guarantees for the final game of BYU football independence happening, of course, here at University Stadium in Albuquerque and the New Mexico Bowl. And game notes. So anything and everything prominent to this matchup that you probably need to know if you want to be an insider fan you're going to find out from us on this show Gideon George on his shoe drive and the rivalry matchup with Utah on the hard court at the Marriott Center tomorrow Jerem will talk to Gideon and his brother and I went one-on-one with BYU center Connor Pay and wide receiver Keanu Hill to get their thoughts on the quarterback situation for BYU, how it might impact the offense, and what they expect when they take on SMU tomorrow. But first, bring on today's headlines. Well, as Take said, Puka Nakua has some lingering injuries and is not a sure thing in the bowl game. More wonderful news from Albuquerque. SMU favored by four now, total is 64 and a half. I'd take the over there. Pre-game starts at 5.30 Eastern on BYU TV tomorrow and BYU Radio. How about our Phil Steel All Independent teams? The BYU Cougars have 11 players that were named to those Phil Steel All Conference teams. The offense first team features Blake Freeland, Jaron Hall, Isaac Rex, Chris Brooks, and Puka Nakua. Second team offense, Cody Epps, Clark Barrington, and Kingsley Suamataia. Second team defenders, Ben Bywater and Micah Harper, and special teams first team, your guy Jerem, Ryan Rico as the punter. When the Jets face Jamal Williams and the Lions on Sunday, Zach Wilson will be the starting quarterback, according to ESPN's Adam Schefter, and then later confirmed by Robert Sala at a press conference. Mike White not cleared for contact after an injury suffered in last Sunday's game. Last night, Fred Warner had eight tackles in a win over my Seahawks. It was tough to watch. Niners won the NFC West. There are two NFL games tomorrow. Sione Takitaki and the Browns face Baltimore. Kyra Strong and the Vikings play the Colts. Other Sunday NFL action includes Brady Christensen and the Panthers playing the Steelers. Kyle Van Oy and the Michael Davis and the Chargers tackling the Titans. Dax Milne expected to be back for the Commanders facing the Giants. And Tyler Algier and the Falcons face off with Taysom Hill and the Saints. BYU men's basketball beat Division II opponent Western Oregon last night in the Marriott Center 97-64. Thanks in large part to 21 points from Gideon George and 17 points and seven rebounds from freshman Richie Saunders. The Cougars host Utah. Saturday pregame on BYU Radio begins at 5 p.m. Eastern. Women's Hoops, big game to begin WCC play in Spokane at number 23 Gonzaga at 5 Eastern time. BYU women's soccer defender Izzy Stratton has been named to the Best 11 all-freshman team according to Top Drawer Soccer. Congratulations to Izzy. Men's volleyball picked to finish sixth out of seven teams in the MPSF coaches poll release yesterday. UCLA picked to repeat as champs. Season begins January 6th against McKendree. 
How about this? Taylor Sander is the AVP Rookie of the Year and Server of the Year. Well done, Taylor. He finished the year in the top 10 amongst all the men for most kills, aces, blocks, controlled blocks, and hitting percentage. He led the tour with 75 aces this season. Not bad. And Cougar swimmer Javier Mata sets the Peruvian national record in the 100 individual medley with a 53.75 in Australia at the FINA World Championships. Very nice. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. It was fun to watch Jaron Hall play football at BYU. Hopefully we get that chance tomorrow. It's not sounding like it. But it's BYU and SMU in the New Mexico Bowl tomorrow. Behind you on that field, Spencer, for the first time since 2010 for the Cougars. Uh, time for some game notes, as you mentioned, to uh, hopefully make you sound smarter, or if you don't trust us, to make you sound dumber. Uh, Spencer, start us <laughs> off. Let's start it off with, yeah. Let's start it off with good news, Jerem. BYU has won every game in the state of New Mexico over the last 25 years. They're 8-0 in that span. And the last time BYU lost here in New Mexico at University Stadium was 1997, which, oh, by the way, just so happens to be the last year BYU played SMU and beat the Mustangs in 1997. Hey, I love that. Uh, just taking it to anybody in, uh, <laughs> in New Mexico. Okay, notable injuries. Uh, Jaron Hall has mentioned probably not going to play. Hasn't been ruled out, but he hasn't been ruled in either. Rasheed Rice, the top receiver in the country in receiving yards per game, is out as well for SMU. If BYU rolls out a backup quarterback, which we fully expect at this point, and Cade Fennigan or... Uh, Nick Billups or Soljay Maab as a starter. We probably expect Kid Finnegan. It'll be the fifth time in 11 independent bowl games where BYU had the backup starting that game. And in the case of Cade Finnegan, it might be perhaps the, the first uh, you know, reps of that season for that quarterback, in this case, Cade's career, since Tom Young in the Aloha Bowl in 92, maybe? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's been a long That's time. That's right, yep, yep. In fact, Kalani Satake gives us the latest on Jaron Hall the BYU quarterback situ situation featuring possibly multiple backups. Jaron's situation, we, we were hoping that he'd be able to go. We did, uh, you know, did some things on, on, on earlier in the week that we thought might be able to be able to take and um, didn't go the way we thought it would, but, uh, you know, we're going to need him to help lead us. And, and um, you know, I, I remember I was talking to Brett about it earlier. I, just remember an episode of Coach back in the day where they went to the Pineapple Bowl and they rolled out the quarterback in the wheelchair and he got up and won the game for him, got MVP. This is not one of those moments. So <laughs> just want to make sure everybody knows that. <laughs> You've watched the same one too? Yeah. Right now everybody's going to go find that episode and watch it. Um, but, and, and I mean, we have... I yeah. <laughs> Well, the, the other guys are, are capable, um, and and there's, I mean, you you might see one, you might see two, you might see three. Uh, right now, so the the last game of the year, um, you know, we told A Rod we don't have a lot of tendencies when it comes to those guys, so let's just go out there and play and see what happens. So officially, Jaron's out then. More than likely, yeah. I mean, unless that episode comes true, <laughs> there's still 48 hours. You never know. Well, there you go. Uh, basically, he hasn't been ruled in, so it doesn't feel like he's playing, right? Um, notable injuries for SMU. Tackle Jalen Thomas has started 10 games at every offensive line position, but center, he is out. Wide receiver uh, Dylan Goffney, third receiving yards, is out too. Obviously, a litany of BYU players out too, but uh, yeah, th this, is, this is a spring game with two teams uh, that it counts in the standings. <laughs> um, that's what it's going to feel like, but hopefully BYU comes out a winner. Hey, I've got a couple of ideas. First of all, we need to implement the Pineapple Bowl, right? He was referencing the Minnesota State Screaming Eagles with Craig T. Nelson on that old show coach. Let's start the Pineapple Bowl. I don't know where it's going to be played, but it feels like it should be in Hawaii, right? Do so we know there's not that, a Pineapple Bowl yeah, already? This... <laughs> I have no, no idea. No idea. We should look into that for sure. Okay, let's keep it rolling with these game notes, Jerem. And you, you were alluding to this a moment ago. To add to the BYU backup quarterback storyline, 
And assuming Cade Fennigan or Soljay Mayava or Nick Billups, one of them is going to start. Assuming one of those guys starts on Saturday, it will mark only the second time that a BYU quarterback is making their initial start, their debut in a bowl game, joining, yes, Steve Young's little brother, Tom Young, when he started the Aloha Bowl in 1992. I jumped you on that one. Sorry. No, that's that's a crazy stat, right? Like, you haven't played for this school, and now you're showing up at a bowl game? That's crazy, right? Okay, uh, yeah. ne- next item. SMU stinks on defense. 92nd or worse in the things that matter. Points per game, yards per game, rush and pass yards per game, yards per play. They stink. Meanwhile, BYU, way better. Eight spots better uh, in at least the best thing. 84th or worse. BYU's defense, not very good either. Um, and a depleted coaching staff, certainly on the defensive side. Kalani Stake has been calling the play since the Liberty game. Two of the five coaches left on the staff, so it's more Gavin Fowler, Jan Jorgensen, and others who have coached this group. Take it for what it's worth. The defense has struggled this year, and now they don't really have the coaching staff. We'll see what happens against a really good SMU offense. With all of that in play, Jerem, BYU is now a four-point underdog, according to the Las Vegas experts, and ESPN's giving the Cougars a 47.5% chance to win with their ESPN football power index numbers in play. But the real magic number for BYU to win this game is 34 points, and here's why. SMU is 0-4 this year when they score 33 or fewer points. If BYU can hold the Mustangs to under 34, the Cougars' chances of winning, statistically speaking, would get a nice boost. That means that BYU would have to score 34, Spence. Uh, With this backup situation, we hope they can uh, run the rock effectively because, again, SMU's defense is not great. Next game note. It's the final game of Independence. I feel like we haven't really even talked about sort of the end of this. We're looking forward. We're so excited. It's the end of a massive era for BYU in its history where it left the Mountain West Conference. It's been in the ESPN Conference, if you will, and now it's playing its 155th independent game, 98-56. and 56. Had BYU just defeated ECU or Liberty or Notre Dame, this would have been going for win 100. That would have been awesome. Instead, yeah. going for win 99. Jerem, the sun sets at 4.56 p.m. tomorrow. <laughs> it's that time of year in mid to late December. You're in just trouble, crazy. Bro. And with a, a cold front in place, game time forecast calls for temperatures around a balmy and freezing 32 degrees at kickoff, dipping into the mid 20s by the time the game finishes. It's going to be absolutely frigid tomorrow night for these players. Well, you look warm. I don't, I don't know. I, if I were you, I'd shed the coat. It looks pretty sunny. I, I don't know, man. New Mexico, it's supposed to be hot, right? This time of year? No, it's, uh, it was cold in 2010, but it wasn't like that. Uh, yeah, hey, maybe that ball's slick and it's hard to throw and it's advantage BYU in the run game, perhaps. We'll see. And last but not least, SMU hasn't won a bowl game since 2012. It's been a minute. Perhaps that's an extra motivation for the Mustangs. Perhaps it's a thing that they don't really win bowl games. Who knows? But certainly they are the favorite expected to win this game. Maybe BYU pulls off the upset and keeps that bowlless streak going of wins for SMU. Yeah, and of course BYU's played SMU three times all time. Never lost to the Mustangs. They'll try and make it four uh, against SMU tomorrow. That takes us to our game day guarantees, Jerem, on the season. I am 18 for 36. No thanks to Dave McCann, who didn't help me out last time. You are 12 for 36. And you, and total now, we are 30 for 72. So you do the math, it's not great, but, but whatever. Jerem, start us off. Let's try and end this season and this independence era on a high note. Okay, BYU will rush for uh, four plus touchdowns. They've run for exactly four touchdowns in the last three bowl games. So I expect that number, especially with this probable game plan of rushing, to happen again. Number two, the team with the most yards wins. Seems too simple, right? But it's precise. BYU 7 0 when it has more yards, 0 5 when it has fewer. Okay? And BYU will rush for 200 plus. I think BYU has to rush for 300 plus to win this game. We just don't know what we're going to see in the past game. If Puka Nakua doesn't play, we don't know who's throwing the rock to. Puka and Keanu Hill and company, you always got to rush for 300. They are 3-1 uh, and one when rushing for 200. They've rushed for 300 twice in the opener and the uh, finale of the regular season against USF and Stanford. Both wins, of course. 
Yeah, SMU gives up 203 yards a game on average on the ground. So I'm with you. Like, that, that's going to happen. You, you should get a point there. Number one for me, however, is at least two different BYU players will complete a pass tomorrow. Kalani Satake said we will see maybe up to three quarterbacks play for BYU. I think at least two of them complete a pass. Maybe there's a trickeration play in there from Aaron Roderick as well. Number two, this goes back to the rushing stat you just brought up. I think Christopher Brooks is going to lead the charge for BYU, and this will help your fantasy football team. He goes for 100-plus. I guarantee it. And then number three, I've said this a few times this week, and dating back to when we initially found out about this matchup, the first team to 30 points is going to win this game. 30 points, you get the 31st, you're going to win the bowl game in New Mexico. I'm hoping BYU gets the 30. Uh, if they're running the rock a bunch and they're dominating, yeah, perhaps. But if BYU's got to throw the ball, we just don't know what we're going to see, and hopefully it's great, but we'll see. This just in, BYU men's volleyball uh, announced the hiring of Otavio Souza as a new assistant on Sean Olmstead's staff. Mike and Naone let go a couple of months ago. Souza returns to BYU, where he played from 09 to 11. He's been coaching on the women's side at Missouri State, St. Mary's, and Cal, and now he joins the BYU program just a couple of weeks ahead of the season opener on January 6th against McKendree. Good to have another Brazilian on the squad. That'll be fun. Okay, let's hear from you in Voice of the Nation, our question of the day. What's your game day guarantee for any BYU sporting event tomorrow? We've got a bunch highlighted by football, men's basketball, and uh, women's basketball. Uh, weigh in on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, at Jared Buckeye on Twitter. Three dubs plus Dallin Hall game winner. <laughs> That'd be awesome. BYU football team wow. total over 30. And Lauren Gustin double-double. Easy money. Uh, perhaps a BYU parlay coming into effect there. <laughs> yeah, why not? Again, we, yesterday we were talking about, hey, it'd be great if one of these teams got a win. If we're being realistic, like it, that feels like maybe is the best case for BYU, but why not? Let's hope for the best tomorrow. Let's hope BYU men's basketball figures it out against Utah. BYU football can, can find a way to win down here at the New Mexico Bowl. And then, yeah, maybe the BYU women's basketball team pulls a shocker in Spokane. We'll see. All right, Jerem, coming up. Check out BYU Sports Nation game day tomorrow, 5.30, as we get you ready for BYU football's independent finale in the New Mexico Bowl. And, of course, BYU men's basketball taking on Utah, 5.30 Eastern on BYU TV. We'll have your preview of that as well. And next, Connor Pay and Keanu Hill from the New Mexico Bowl. What's the best thing they've done while down there? And how's this game going to go down? This is BYU Sports Nation from Albuquerque and Provo. BYU Sports Nation is live on a Friday. This is how we do it from Albuquerque, New Mexico and Provo, Utah. Bowl game eve. Of course, BYU and SMU matching up tomorrow on this field behind me at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific. Yesterday, I had a chance to speak with BYU wide receiver Keanu Hill before his final practice of uh, the 2022 season to get his take on the BYU quarterback situation, bowl game activities, and much more. Here's my one-on-one -on -one with Keanu Hill. Kibo, great to have BYU football in New Mexico. What's the best thing that you've done since you've arrived in the land of enchantment? I think the best thing I've done was, hmm, I actually went out a walk with me and my boy Dean. We actually went out to go see the city a little bit. You know, it actually was pretty cool to see how like the city was and stuff like that. Yeah. So, yeah, shout out my boy Dean. <laughs> <laughs> what, do, what do you think Albuquerque thus far? It's, it's fun. I mean, it is cold. It is cold. I mean, I have been out in New Mexico before because I have family that lives out here, like near the border of Texas and, and New Mexico. So, it does get really cold out here. So, I mean, yeah, but. <laughs> Are you expecting a big family turnout? Uh, yes, I actually am. Actually, I got my uncle coming out, my auntie and uncle and my uh, cousin, my dad, my pops also coming out too. So hey, we need a Keanu Hill fan base going. That that that's good. Okay, as you turn your attention to SMU, you're obviously uh, getting set for practice today. What are you trying to accomplish in these final few practices? Just to polish up all our all our all our weapons that we have not like weapons that we have but like i polish all up our techniques and stuff like that we have a really good game plan coming in this this week and uh we just need to come out here and execute it so i feel like coming out here and just going 100 percent and just staying focused stay dialed in to uh, uh the game plan that we have if Cade fennigan is the guy we don't know a ton about him 
Well, you've seen him in practice. You know what he's about. What's Cade Fennigan like as a quarterback? I was going to have to wait and see and find out on Saturday. <laughs> yeah, I was going to have to wait and find out because, I mean, I have, a lot of, I have a lot of faith in him and a lot of trust in him. So, yeah, I was going to have to find out and see when it comes. I'm told he throws a uh, pretty good ball. He's got a strong arm. Is he hurting your hands a little bit? Mm, not too much. Not too much. <laughs> I have strong hands. So. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. I'm glad you pointed that out. Okay, what do you know about SMU's defense at this point? Um, that they have a young – coaching staff coming in and they have been figuring things out this whole uh, season so but like by the time like you know how when stuff goes on you start figuring things out I feel like they have that good understanding of what they want to do on off on their defensive side they're very aggressive too which I like which I like about them because you know coming from Dallas and how Texas teams are you know that gets me pumped up too so but really that they, they're aggressive and they're not they're not afraid I feel like they can come up make tackles they can cover so it's going to be a lot they have a lot of talent on that team Maybe there is something special about the Dallas connection with Cade Fennigan and Keanu going against the Dallas team. I really forgot about that. <laughs> Worlds colliding here in New Mexico. Okay, we'll let you get to practice. We appreciate the time. Thanks, Keanu. Appreciate it. Keanu Hill one-on-one -on -one before practice yesterday. And, Jerem, a couple of things stand out there. One, he pointed out, we've got a really, really good game plan. I like it. And if Cade Fennigan is the guy, he trusts in Cade Fennigan. It'd be funny if he was like, oh my gosh, our game plan's terrible, we're, we're toast. No, of course, they feel confident in the game plan. They prepare well, always. Um, but yeah, this is unique. They, they've got to have a unique game plan in this one because it's clearly not just, okay, Cade Fennigan, you are a one-for-one -one replacement of Jaron Hall. Certainly, Jaron isn't Cade and Cade isn't Jaron, but Kalani Stake opened the door to we may see multiple quarterbacks here. So what that means is, if it's Nick Billups, who's built bar employee number one, or Soljay Mayaba is, we're going to see some run game because those guys can RPO. Those guys can uh, quarterback keep on different plays. So we'll see different wrinkles in this. And again, this, this game, certainly BYU wants to win and get to eight, eight wins. But this is a let's just mess around and see if we can't mess around and get a triple-double, as Ice, uh, Ice Cube once said. Can we mess around and get a New Mexico Bowl win somehow against a potent SMU offense where defensively they don't know what we're going to throw out because, frankly, we may not know what we're going to throw out there to some degree outside of what we've seen in practice. These guys are getting number one reps, being Fennigan, uh, Mayava, and uh, Billups. So we'll see, man. And, yeah, you mentioned it, the Texas connection there. We'll see if Cade and Keanu, these Texas kids who – in the future, we anticipate perhaps more in the Big 12 from Texas for BYU. Show up and show out. Aaron Roderick, the offensive coordinator, right before he ran into the indoor practice facility for practice, did tell a few members of the media, us included, that we were going to see something exciting tomorrow, that there will be some fireworks, some unexpected things. So take that for what you will. Now we turn our attention to Connor Pay, the BYU center, I asked him, among other things, how things will be different if Jaron Hall is not the quarterback and what he's experienced in the land of enchantment. Here's Connor Pay. Connor, let me offer you a, an additional welcome to New Mexico and University Stadium. How would you explain the atmosphere and the environment around the team right now as you prepare for the bowl game? It's good. We're just excited to be here and get to play another game together one more time. So. The activities have been fun and getting to spend more time together as a team, meet everyone's families. It's not uh, very often the whole team, including their wives, coaches, families, everyone gets to be together, so it's been fun. BYU enjoyed an epic performance at the ground game against Stanford. How do you carry that over to the bowl game against an SMU team that has had their trouble stopping the run? Well, I think just trying to make sure we do our due diligence with film study and figuring out where the weaknesses are because they do they have good players and they're a good defense and but they've just struggled with a few things throughout the year and we have to figure out how we can exploit that um, which is something we were able to do well against Stanford. Now I know the quarterback has been a hot topic is Jaron going to play is going to be Cade Fennigan how does the game plan change for you as the captain of the offensive line depending on who the quarterback is? It doesn't really um, I mean, sure, if a younger guy's in there, maybe it's a little more explanation for things or making sure everyone's on the same page. But other than that, the game plan doesn't really change. Um, just playing to every guy's strengths. But for us up front, I mean, it's no different. The play's called and we run it regardless of what's called. So, Are you in favor of running the ball more than passing? Oh, well, I always want to run the ball. 
I always want to run the ball. Every O-line wants to just run the ball down everybody's throat. But, uh, you know, that's not always how the game goes. So whatever A-Rod feels is best is, and how he wants to call the game is what we're going to do. So You're headed into practice here in a moment. What are you trying to accomplish in these final few practices before you get to Saturday in the bowl game? Just tuning some things up on the game plan, some things that we haven't had a chance to rep yet or we've only hit them once or twice because most of the game plan has been set for a while now. And so now it's just going through and making sure we're on our P's and Q's with everything. Um, and so as we continue to do that, we just want to make sure we're clean and crisp throughout these last two practices. So, Now you mentioned that uh, you've done your due diligence. You've, you've watched SMU. They've got good players. Mm -hmm. Where do you feel like BYU does have an advantage, per se, against that defense with the offense you bring in? Um, you know, it's hard to pinpoint advantages and disadvantages because every scheme is a little bit different. And they haven't played an offense this year that's run like ours, per se. Uh, and so it's hard to directly compare. Um, but I think that we're going to be able to put um, ourselves in a lot of positions to conflict the defense and find some seams uh, in the run game and in the pass game. So, How is the health and status of the offensive line as a unit right now? Good. And depending on the quarterback, let, let's talk about it. If Cade's the guy, what do you notice about Cade Fennigan as the quarterback? He throws the ball well, man. And he, and he threatens people with his legs, too. All those guys really can. And so I think, you know, it's just who can go in there and give us the best chance to win. And we'll figure out who that is in the next couple of days. A-Rod will make his decision, and we'll rally behind him, whoever that ends up being. So Saturday night primetime, it's going to be cold. How do you feel about playing in the cold in your final game? I don't care. Like, it's fine. It's not that bad. Like, it, it'll be pretty similar to this, maybe a few degrees cooler, and it feels fine right now. So I think it'll be good. I don't think it'll be much of a factor. Okay, and, and you alluded to it earlier. You've enjoyed the family time. What's the best thing you've done in New Mexico since you've been here? Sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Uh, we, went, we went and had a welcome dinner and events at an arcade and a bowling place, which is fun. So... Who's the best bowler on the team? I have no idea. I have no idea. We all suck. Did you break 100? No, I didn't even play. I didn't play. I, stuck, I played arcade games. That's what I did. Connor, I love a lot of things about you, but I love your honesty and how forthright you are probably more than anything. <laughs> hey, you know, <laughs> I guess that's just how I roll. I don't know. I don't know. Connor, appreciate the time, man. Good luck on Saturday. Appreciate it. <laughs> Authentic. Authentic to the core. Connor Pay, fantastic stuff from the BYU Center. And I expect him to lead the charge for the BYU rushing attack tomorrow. He's a confident dude, and he feels like BYU is going to have their way up front against that SMU defense. He has resting game face, by the way. Um, he, is, he is just... <clears throat> Like, when I see him, I just hear, mm. He's got a deep, rich voice, by the way, which I'm jealous of. Uh, it's, it's beautiful. He made it sound like the quarterback situation is more of an open competition than a Cade and other looks. So we'll see what that, uh, what that looks like. Yeah, who, who knows? Will BYU play three different quarterbacks tomorrow? Maybe. Maybe they're just running around like crazy. When Aaron Roderick said, you'll see something exciting and unexpected tomorrow, that's the first thing that came to mind is, oh, man, are they going to run out diff a bunch of different quarterback looks? We'll see. All right, listen as BYU basketball hosts Utah tomorrow, Jerem. Coverage begins at 5 Eastern on the BYU radio app and locally in the state of Utah on 107.9 FM. Can Zach Wilson win his starting job back with the Jets this week? He's got a chance. We'll discuss. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation live from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Jerem Jordan is live in Provo, Utah. To interact with the show and get fantastic content throughout your day, do so on demand. Follow us on our social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Hey, by the way, the Pineapple Bowl is a now defunct bowl that was in Hawaii, Honolulu specifically, from 1940 <laughs> to 52. Suspense, they just have to bring it back. All right, let's whip it. 
Google Whip Around is presented by Marisk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. Let's start with this, Jerem. Which BYU team winning tomorrow? Women's basketball at Gonzaga, men's basketball at home against Utah, or BYU football against SMU in the New Mexico Bowl would qualify as the biggest upset win? I'm going to go with women's hoops because Gonzaga is ranked. They are undefeated at home and beating fools by 31 a game there. So if the women's team pulls off that win, that is the biggest upset. I 100% agree. It would definitely be if BYU women's basketball can win in Spokane. The ladies have a huge challenge, huge challenge for the BYU women to show up and beat uh, Gonzaga in Spokane, even when they're a great team, let alone a rebuilding team. It's tough to win there. It really is. Uh, today marks the beginning of bowl season, 41 and all. How many will you watch? I'm guessing I will watch about half of them. Half? I would love to say that I will make time and find time for all 41. But come on, You're watch there's just 20 a few bowl games, games that I don't get. Yeah, 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 probably. At least portions of 20. Oh, portions? Oh, okay. Is that, is that, that, yeah, 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 portions. I'm not oh. talking about the whole game. I'm just saying, like, I will watch a, at least a little bit of probably half of the bowl games just by nature of it being on ESPN screens when you're at restaurants and whatnot. So yeah, portions of about half. What about you? Yeah, I don't know how many portions because I'm not that interested in the fact that UAB is up 10 nothing in the Bahamas Bowl right now. <laughs> uh, UTSA and Troy are both ranked. I didn't even know that. Uh, I don't care. Um, no, I will watch every play of the New Year's Six. Obviously BYU and uh, maybe a handful of others. That's how, that's how I typically look. Okay. Jeremy, you mentioned, uh, okay, so obviously Bowl Week it has our full attention with BYU, but it's hard not to want to pay attention to the NFL, especially when we learn that Zach Wilson is going to make the start against Jamal Williams and the Detroit Lions on Sunday. Is there anything that Zach can do on Sunday that will keep him as the starter moving forward? Yeah. If the dude throws for 300 and like three touchdowns and is super efficient and a good teammate and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, he could, he could be totally in the mix. Obviously, they're going to give Mike White a chance of healthy. But Zach could certainly get in the good graces with a nice performance against a Lions team that is playing way better, coming off a nice win against the Vikings who have been super overrated. Um, yeah, it's going to be... That there's he could he could really do himself some good absolutely absolutely yeah the Detroit Lions are playing really good football this would be a good win for the Jets if they can beat Detroit and slow them down a little bit this is a tough challenge for sure Zach can and if we're being honest like if Mike White's not good now the Jets are going to play on a short week on Thursday Zach might at least make a couple of starts it, when they take on the Jaguars on Thursday. So we'll see, but certainly a win over the Lions and Zach not turning the ball over primarily would, would go a long way to help Jets fans and more importantly, his coach feel better about him making multiple starts. Foose was out last night with a lower body injury. Are you as concerned as I am that he might not play in the Utah game? 100% I'm concerned. If Foose can't play against Utah, then how does BYU defend Brendan Carlson? Brendan Carlson's playing really good basketball for the running Utes. So as much as I love Atiki Ali Atiki, BYU doesn't have very much depth and size at that position. BYU needs Foose. Hopefully he can get healthy and play. I'm very concerned. My understanding, having gone to uh, shoot around yesterday and talked to Mark Pope about it, is uh, you know we'll, we'll wait and see. Uh, but the hope is that he plays. I believe that BYU rested him last night so that he could play on Saturday uh, with that lower body injury. So we'll see what he does against Brandon Carlson in the youth. Get healthy Fusini Traore. BYU men's volleyball pick to finish sixth out of seven teams in the MPSF preseason poll. Is number six out of seven a fair preseason ranking? It's fair. BYU's got to show the league that they are better than last year. It was a young group. They have Davide Gardini, who was the first team All-American again. But outside of that, it's, it's a, a bunch of young guys who have some talent, but they got to show it. Uh, always tough in the MPSF. Mix Ramones is back. Luke Benson's going to play way more, um, be in the rotation. 
Uh, they like Trent Moser, a freshman out of Arizona, who's played for the U.S. U19 team in Cuba in some competition. So, yeah, uh, you know, they're bringing in a, a libero who will play uh, uh, from the U19 Brazilian national team, who will play some outside, provide some ball control on Bernardo Alfredo. And they have a new assistant coach, as we mentioned, Octavio Souza. It's a wait and see. They've got to show it. It's a young group. I don't expect them to win the league, Spence, but I think they may surprise people if they climb into that uh, top three or four. Yes, I think BYU absolutely has the opportunity to finish as a top four team in the MPSF. Six is fair, like you said, coming off last year and BYU being a young team, but I trust in Sean Olmstead. I think he thrives in these type of scenarios in the rebuild mode. Like, it was tough last year, but he's rebuilding. He's got some energy. I love Mix Romanus. Yeah, BYU's going to finish top four. They'll surprise some people. They didn't bring in a big offensive weapon, per se. They're going to have to do it with the guys they have internally, which they like. Okay, there, there was this gem of an exchange on Twitter last night. It started with uh, CFB Home uh, tweeting after seeing Utah football stats and analysis saying, imagine playing in a bowl game over a week before Christmas. Clear shot at uh, Los Cougars de BYU. CFB Home, it's been 1,079 days since the Pac-12 won a bowl game. It, it has been 1,815 days since Utah won a bowl game. <laughs> And then uh, True Blue, BYU 1984. It's also been 1,204 days since Utah beat BYU in football. Uh, your thoughts on these interactions and is CFB home uh, a BYU fan? Uh. <laughs> Clearly they're showing something here. They're, they're letting the royal blue show out. I don't, I don't know if CFB home is a BYU fan, but they're certainly not a Utah fan based on those tweets. Good grief. Yeah, listen, we have to tip our cap. Two Pac-12 titles and, uh, you know, Rose Bowls. That's amazing. Hopefully BYU <laughs> one day gets to that point. Will it take uh, 11 years like it took Utah? I don't know, but it'll be worth the wait whenever it happens, if it happens. BYU can take care of business. Hey, if they win the bowl game, they're home for the holidays. They can enjoy more time with family. It's all good. Early bowl games are okay. Speaking of bowling in Albuquerque, you can listen to complete coverage of tomorrow's New Mexico Bowl when BYU faces SMU for the fourth time ever and first time in the New Mexico Bowl. Coverage beginning at 5.30 Eastern with Cougar pregame live on BYU Radio and the BYU Radio app. And Gideon George, George uh, joins us to talk about his shoe drive, about playing Utah tomorrow, lots going on in his life. This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. When the victory's on the line, you can't run. If I want it, you know it's mine, don't try to run. I'm eating that crunch time, you'll never run. You can't run. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. What a great performance from Gideon George yesterday against Western Oregon, including that teeth-grinding dunk in the first half against the Wolves. I am Jerem Jordan. Spencer Linton will join us in a moment from Albuquerque. Well, it's a busy time of year for everybody, but especially Gideon George. He was playing basketball, finishing finals, just got engaged, and this week is doing a massive shoe drive just like he did last year. But hey, they want it to be even bigger and better. Gideon George joined me in studio to talk about all of it. Always good to have Gideon George in the Cougar, Cougar Council Room, as Spencer likes to call it. Here we go. We got a little Cougar and everything, Gideon. Uh, okay, um, you did this last year, the uh, the shoe drive. You now have a foundation. Mm -hmm. You got six thousand pairs of shoes last year, which is incredible. The goal is ten thousand this year, right? Yeah, the goal is ten thousand this year. Uh, sometimes I think it's a lot, but just seeing Cougar Nation coming through last year with the six thousand pairs of shoes. So I'm like, how can we up it up and save like 10,000 lives in Nigeria? So that's why we're doing it this year. Okay, yeah. now you say, you say saving lives. This is real though, and we learned this in your Deep Blue a couple years ago, because disease is often transferred through the feet. And when a kid has shoes, that can literally save them, can it not? Yeah, that would go a long way. It's like giving them a reason to be alive and keeping them away from diseases. So that's what we're trying to do to like have impact on people's lives in Nigeria. You've started a foundation and the focus is mainly the shoes, uh, but uh, you know, people can donate. And if you go outside the Marriott Center, you see uh, the big crate, uh, it's there. So yeah. before the Utah game or uh, even, you know, uh, later Friday, you can go and, and, and take these shoes in and donate it. 
if people have shoes but they can't get to the Marriott Center, is there a way for them to contribute? Um, you can go on my foundation website, which is www.georgehelpinghandsfoundation, then you will see where to donate your shoes and stuff like that. They are in the foundation website there. You picked the, uh, you know, this week, Western Oregon game and the Utah game. I think that's smart of you. The Utah <laughs> game's going to be a big crowd, is it not? And uh, th this is a fan base that certainly knows how to give. Yeah, so it's a big rivalry game against BYU and Utah. So, and so we're trying to see how it's going to be involved between BYU and Utah fans, how they can help, like, how they can help donate and save the lives of uh, kids back home. Because at the end of the day, it's bigger than basketball, it's bigger than all of us. We're just trying to make the world a better place. And let's be honest, at Christmas time, you know, I, I give and I get gifts that sometimes aren't used in a meaningful way. It's fun, but when you give these pair of shoes, you know that it's going to impact someone in an amazing way. Not every gift is sort of that meaningful. So if you're going to give something this Christmas, hey, Give a pair of shoes to the uh, Helping Hands Foundation. Yeah, just bring your pairs of shoes and it will go a long way in saving lives, just as I said earlier, and it is a really meaningful gift too. Okay, you wore some of these shoes growing up. When did you first get a pair of donated shoes from the United States? Um, I got a pair of shoes from Time Out to Africa. So I went to his camp in Nigeria. So he's like the dude that first gave me like brand new pairs of shoes and I can remember the joy on my face and just running home and showing my mom she was really happy for me and just getting a new pair of shoes I wear it to church I wear it to play ball I wear it everywhere, you wore them everywhere everywhere <laughs> so, absolutely so that was really awesome how old were you I was um, 12 13 12 13 and were you getting shoes that were your size I imagine as a six foot six basketball player Sometimes it's hard to find your shoe range. Yeah, he he did a really good job though. So he got me shoes that are my size. So I don't know how he did it, but he did a pretty awesome job. That's awesome, man. And what uh, from last year um, and the year before? What what have you seen in terms of actual people giving responses of, "Hey, we received the shoes." I know we've seen pictures and video of kids with these, which is just priceless. What's the reaction been like of of getting more shoes? than before teaming up with Time Out for Africa like you benefited from when you were younger. Yeah, it is, it is like incredible, you know. My friends would call me back home. They would tell me about the impact the shoes is making in the lives of those kids. And like if you see some video, the old shoes that the kids are wearing is like worn out and tear out. Um, I was in that position too. So just seeing the joy on the kids' faces, just how happy they are getting the new pairs of shoes, it means like the world to them. So I understand that feeling because I was like them too. I was there, I was in that position. So just being able to like put a smile on their faces and bring joy to their life is like the whole world to me. We're talking to Gideon George on BYU Sports Nation. When a kid gets these shoes, you talked about how you wore them everywhere. Uh, what kind of impact does this have uh, on their life? And then what do you think this means for the development of people like you who perhaps could have a brighter future because, hey, they can show their athletic skills. Maybe that means a scholarship. Maybe that means uh, you know something back home or over here. What kind of impact do you think that could mean for a kid that gets shoes like that? Yeah, um, so I'm trying to do this and I'll say it's not all about me. So it's about the kids and just trying to help their parents. I'll give the story countless time. Like, let's say a pair of shoes costs $100 out here and the kids, their parent out there doesn't make even up to $100 a month. Mm -hmm. So instead of using that money to buy shoes for their kids, so I'm just trying to help for them to, so they can like channel the money to other sources, like paying for like school fees, like paying for like maybe like this Christmas period, buying them Christmas clothes instead of worrying about shoes. So let me worry about the shoes, let them worry about all the aspects of like the kids' life. So we're just trying to help and and just seeing the kids, maybe that will go a long way for them and making them being a better player and a better ambassador to their society and maybe even giving them the shoes that will keep them from doing like 
any bar stuff and just going around with friends, at least it will help them to be on the basketball court and sharpening their t um, tools and their skills too. Well, it's certainly a great cause. Uh, make sure you donate your new or lightly paired, uh, lightly used shoes, uh, those pairs, to the uh, Helping Hands Foundation run by Gideon George, as you mentioned, your website. Uh, you can go to that. Or if you can come in person, come to the Utah game on Saturday night. Let's talk about that game. Certainly a big game, a rival. Utah's pretty good this year. You guys have had your ups and downs right now, coming off one of the ups uh, against Creighton. Do you feel like you can summon a similar performance from the Creighton game against the Utes? Um, it's just, just buying into what the coaching staff are preaching and teaching every day. You know, like uh, little stuff really matters, like diving on the floor, get, uh, getting offensive rebound, like protecting the defensive end to just guarding your yard. So I think if you take all those little stuff, like putting them all together, that, that will help us to come out at the end of the tournament. Okay, well, uh, good luck against Utah on Saturday night. Everybody uh, donate your shoes, and good luck with finals oh, as you th finish those up. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks, Gideon. Appreciate you. Gideon George on BYU Sports Nation. Again, make sure to donate your new or lightly used shoes to the Gideon George Helping Hands Foundation and change some lives in Nigeria. Well, re we remind you that BYUSN.com is your home for all uh, games and shows on demand, BYUSN.com. Coming up, the last fantasy football matchup of the year. Can I win one? Puts off to a hot start in men's hoops fantasy, and we take a look back at the Miracle Bowl. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. All right, let's update our fantasy basketball standings after last night. For me, Foos didn't play. What? Rudy Williams had 16 parbs, points, assists, rebounds, blocks, steals. Slow night against the D2 team for Rudy. I've got Lauren Gus and Kaylee Smiler from Women's Hoops at Gonzaga. And Kalen Trong of Gonzaga. How about you, Spence? All right, let's go with Gideon George, who had 31 parbs, led by 21 points, two assists, six rebounds, a block, and a steal. Dallin Hall had 17. He had a tidy career best of 14 points, two assists, a rebound. I've got Yvonne Ejim representing Gonzaga women's basketball. Nani Falatea and Rose Bubakar all in play tomorrow. You got a big lead going into uh, tomorrow. Okay, I got some work to do. Okay, now for our final fantasy football Friday picks. The news with Zach Wilson changed my lineup. I'm starting Zach. Let's go. Because I believe he will play and do better wow. than who knows who BYU's throwing out there. I could have gone with Cade Fennigan, could have dropped Zach or somebody else and gone with Fate. Cade, I guess I could have uh, picked up somebody else, but I need Ben Bywater. And I think Christopher Brooks is going to have a monster game. Otherwise, I'd play Cade and Zach. Um, Zach, Ben, Chris, who you got? All right, I've got, well, I should say I started Fred Warner last night. He already played and had eight tackles, so doing his thing for me, consistent. I'm going with J Swag Daddy, Jamal Williams. He just got his BYU Sports Nation swag box from his chair. I think there's good vibes there. He's going to score a touchdown against the Jets. And I am dropping the number one overall pick, Jaron Hall, by necessity, and picking up Cade Fennigan to start for me. So I am going with the guy I think will take the most snaps for BYU football at that quarterback position. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm hoping, and maybe it's, maybe it's not great, but I hope that Zach Wilson <laughs> brings it home for me. I need a win here. Our question of the day, what's your game day guarantee for any BYU sporting event tomorrow? The Elite Voice of the Day is presented by PAX Healthcare Elevated. Michael Smith on Twitter. Not, not the jazz Michael Smith, is it? That BYU will not beat SMU like they did in the Miracle Bowl. It will be a total handling, and they will lead from start to finish. Oh, the BYU just opens it up and wins convincingly. Wow. I like it. Today's Rise and Shoutout is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. So long to independent football, Spence. This is it. What, it's been a, a crazy era, and it's over. Okay, our thanks to today's guests, Keanu Hill, Connor Pay, and Gideon George. All right, and uh, we should note that the conversation continues 24-7, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, BYUSN.com. Okay, that'll do it for us. Some images from the Miracle Bowl in 1980. I'm Jerem. He's spent. Oh, Shout out to Raul Delgado. We'll see you tomorrow game. for football pregame coverage on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Go Cougs!